Hello guys, what's up and welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Worker Studio. In this tutorial, we will talk about how we can work with some useful and functional lights in Enscape for SketchUp. So I will review all of them very fast and easy. And after that, we will create some super realistic interior render with artificial lights, include spotlight, sphere light, line light, hidden light, and IES profile light. So let's get to work. First of all, I'm going to close the uh, Enscape in here. Before I close it, you can see our environment is like this. And I want to manage all the lights step by step. So I'm going to close it in here. I'm going to press Ctrl S because lighting is a heavy work. And I want to be sure about my file backup. So I have three type of artificial lights which related to lighting, floor lights and lamps. And I want to use them for make my screen more brighter, especially at the afternoon and nights rendering. So if you look at the back side, I have some designs on my wall, which related to some extruded faces. And you can see how you can manage it very simple and easy. So the body of it is the plaster and inside of it, we have some simple color texture. I want to use this lines as the uh, line light. So I'm going to show you step by step. First of all, I need to create a spotlight. So I'm going to click on the Enscape objects in here and click on the spot in this place and draw my first spotlight very simple and easy like that. So the main mistake for beginners is that when you want to use this spotlight, it will completely destroy your render. And I can guarantee this point because spotlights not work very well and you need to use IS profiles for better quality and view in your renders. So click on it, click on the Enscape object, click on the load IS profile. And I think in the uh, drive DI sync, I can type IES, IES, IES slides is come for me like that. I can open it. I have 30 IES profiles in here, which you can download it below this video. I will upload the link of it for you. So I want to use IES number six, for example, and I can click on the open or IES number five. It's completely related to you. I prefer to use IES number six. Click on the open. Now you have new IES profile and the power of intensity is about zero. You can increase it and the size of it will be increased too. So try to set some value about 500. Click on the move option and move it very smoothly and easy to this part of your job. Now you need to organize it. So I'm going to rotate it in some angle like this. Click on the move option, move it to this surface in here, some place like that. And now it completely match with my light in the uh, SketchUp 3D environment. Next time I can click on the uh, control on my keyboard, take another copy and use it in this part of my job. So listen carefully. When you take another copy of this spotlight, all IES data and light power will be copied with it. So because the lights are components, so you need to create some unique light. Right click and make unique. Now you can click on the uh, move option in here and you can rotate it something like that and adjust it to these part of your job for example so click on the uh, enscape object another time now you can change your ies profile and i think it can be really attractive number five is enough for me i'm going to click on the open 500 candela is my lumion's power intensity next time i can take another copy like that to this part of my job very simple and enjoyable this time I can click on the uh, load IES profile again but if I change it previous light will be changed too so you need to right click and add another make unique component in this place so now I have three different lights in this screen number one number two and number three I can click on the number three and add some seven IES profile in this place and everything is done for me. Close it. Our work is finished with it. 
Now I can click on the paint bucket in here. Click on the in model, pick up the sample paint or texture picker. Click on this place and you can see light creamy is my texture. I can come to the um, Inkscape material editor and light creamy is selected for me. And if I want to convert it from texture to the light, I can change it from generic to the self eliminated. So right now it's enough for me. I don't want to change it because I want to change it at the uh, render preset. So I'm going to click on this light in here. You can see the power of it set for me. Now how I can change the color of it. Absolutely when you open the Enscape, you can see white color and white light from it. So click on the uh, paint bucket materials color named and in here you can pick up one of these colors for example light salmo and add it to this light another time in this place and another time in this place all of these three lights have some three different type of IES profiles but have the same color and same energy so click on the edit mode and now you can make your light more yellow or purple it's completely related to you how you want to design and visualize your interior render so everything is done for me i'm gonna go a little bit to the backward something like that press ctrl s click on the rectangle draw my roof side for myself something like that extrude it about maybe 10 centimeter make a group everything is fine and now i want to start my rendering so Press Ctrl S, click on the uh, Start Enscape. It's a really heavy work when you light your screen, so be patient. Sometimes maybe it takes a little bit time to calculate light energy and light power for your 3D visualizing environment. So, I'm going to press F on my keyboard, click on the Create View in here, unlink my visual preset and rename it to the uh, Lighting N01 add it to my favorite renders because I really like to create some special render with special lighting. The pitch is about zero so I'm gonna fix my camera something like that with moving and walking in my environment. I think something like this can be really helpful. So the pitch is about zero because I have some straight camera line. Y is about 90 degree. X is about 9 y is your eye height so try to change it 1.4 it's not changing because you are on the walk mode you need to change it to the fly mode in here and now you can change it to the 1.4 something like this and z is about negative 5.1 everything is done for me you can save and escape some position or unsave it i try to save it so hold shift rmb and change the time of the day something near to the night and afternoon so it's about 10 p.m i think some number like maybe maybe this one can be really good something like this Six twenty-six p.m i will hold control plus you and i and change the time of the day. Look at the backside and HDRI outside of this house. You can see some sunset view. It can be really enjoyable. So try to manage your GI calculation very carefully because it is really important and necessary. So something like that can be really artistic. Azimuth is about 300 degree. Altitude is about negative 6.6. .6. And I'm going to click on the create option in here. Lighting number one created for me and now I want to manage all of these lights step by step. So I'm going to minimize it in here. Click on the uh, SketchUp and Escape like that. So click on the uh, Enscape Material Editor. I'm going to start with the light creamy in here and change it to the self illuminate. You can see now what really happened and you can control your lights very simple and easy. Rendering quality on the medium mode. So if you change it to the high mode, the lighting calculation will be changed for you step by step. I will use high mode right now because ultra, as a matter of fact, it's a little bit heavy for my system. So I want to use high mode in here. All right, I'm going to close it in this place. 
I can play with the aluminum's power to reach to some good decayed number for myself. Something about 646 candela per meter is enough. The color is bisco, but I can change it to the white totally. For example, something like that. It can be good, but not perfect. So try to hold your number lower than 500. 400 candela is enough for right now. Click on the light salmon in here and everything is fine for us. So close it in this place and now time for the uh, making your camera more realistic. Click on the uh, save frame in this place, press F, click on the edit lighting number one in here. And I try to make my render more darker. Maybe something like this can be really good. All right. Negative 6.2. Azimuth is about 120 and press save. All right. Lighting number one updated for me. Now I'm going to click on the visual setting, move my visual setting in here, try to reduce field of view as you want. For example, 57 degrees enough for you. Exposure can be increased, but before I do this work, I need to fix all of my lightings. So I'm going to minimize it in the right side, sketch up in the left side, click on the light number one in here. If I move this light, you can see the changes in your environment, very simple. But try to don't do this work. Click on the uh, Enscape objects. And now all IES profiles have some different type of luminance intensity in energy and powerizing. So try to increase the number of it and you can see the changes very simple and easy. For example, for IES number 6, 90,000 candela is enough for some normal brightness. Try to use eight, 18,000 Candela for this one. Next item is this light in here. Click on it. Enscape objects. Try to increase it as you can. And you can see what really happened inside your render. For example, 4,000 candela is enough. Next light in here. I think in this place. I'm going to select it. Enscape objects and increase it as you can. Now you can see what really happened inside your render. For example, 280,000 candela is enough for IES number 7. So the power range of them are completely different between each other. So try to play with them to reach to the good result. I'm going to close it. Lighting number 1 selected for me in here. So I'm going to open this roof in the edit mode in SketchUp. Try to add another tape measure for my sailing. Something like this and this. Try to draw some rectangle. Click on the offset. And make it a little bit to the back side, about one centimeter. Click on the paint bucket in model textures and I want to select light cream in here and add it to this part of my job and now you have some sailing light in your render very simple and easy if you want some stunning and mesmerizing render you need to take lots of time for these type of renders so click on it minimize it select this light as a matter of fact I have some problem with the angle of this light so I can manage it like this and change the view of it like that. Very simple. All right. Something like this angle can be enough for me. Lighting number one selected for me. Everything is fine. Come back to the Enscape. So now time for playing with setting for realistic render. Click on the visual setting. First of all, turn off the auto exposure to see what's really happened. So you need auto exposure because it completely ruined your render. Click on the auto exposure, increase exposure. Some number about 63% is enough. Field of view is 57. Turn on the depth of field, turn off the autofocus 
and now you have some flu render so we need focus render and sharp render so try to focus on these tables sofa accessories and some other things like that because it makes your render more interesting and adorable depot field is about 11 but you can see the changes in your lighting calculation click on the image bar use the auto correct auto contrast because it is really important for your render color temperature can be really effective inside of your job for example if i reduce color temperature we will have some warm render and if i increase it our environment will be get more cold so 6200 kelvin is enough saturation is about 101 motion blur is zero lens flare and bloom is really important look at these line lights in here we have some faded out lights near to these lights if i increase the bloom option it will make it sure and show itself more and more realistic but it's a little bit artistic try to use six person for the bloom Lens flare is about 44, Wignate can be decreased to the 21, and chromatic aberration is 0. Go to the atmosphere bar, turn off the fog option because it's related to the exterior GI calculation. Some brightness not really important, try to turn it off or try to use it on some normal number. Night sky brightness can be increased to the 149 because we have some interior render with a part of exterior which related to these windows shadow sharpness can be zero because in interior lighting all the places are soft shadows artificial light brightness is really really important when i increase it you can see what truly really happened all the spotlights will be increased at the same period of time so try to manage it in some number about 119 percent Hyperlight or ambient brightness related to the sun brightness, but in these type of renders, Enscape can activate it automatically. 78% is enough. Wind is not really important. In the skybox, I want to turn off all of these options. And output is about Full HD. I can use Ultra HD. And if I increase rendering quality to the Ultra, lighting will be recalculated for us. So... This is the final thing that we have in here and I hope you enjoyed this video guys. We light our screen like that very simple but for final step we have some work with this texture. So I'm going to minimize another time. Click on the Enscape material editor. Look at this floor in here. When I click on the wood cover on number 6 and when I want to decrease the image fade something like that for example 94 percent if i decrease roughness to the zero we will have some screen like this it's like that you glue up your floor like this it's not realistic so try to use some nice reflection for your textures like wood or floor laminate so 26.9 inter and everything is fine if i increase the specular lighting will be get more exposed so 64 percent is enough everything is done and now time for the rendering if you like this video please like and subscribe our youtube channel i hope you enjoyed this video guys i'm really thankful for your time for your support and i hope you can learn all of these tutorials for better and realistic renders and results. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your watching and goodbye.